Hi, I'm Hilary Holsenbeck, and welcome to episode 137 of Art This Week. In this week's episode, we speak with Scuba, Sandra Wong, and Crockett Bodelson. Their show is currently on view at And X Art Space. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm Rosanna, and I'm here at Andex speaking with Sandra Wong and Crockett Boldelson, uh, the art duo, <laughs> Scuba, and uh, we're talking about the piece here, City Zoo, and mm -hmm. it's it's uh, this piece is actually inside and out. You said inside the outside. Inside the outside for City Zoo, and um, tell me about this piece and and how you guys created it. Most of all, uh, the process behind doing this. Well, we were invited to be part of the show City Zoo um, mm -hmm. with Brand 10 mm -hmm. and Kathy, who brought us onto the show, told us that they were opening a new second space and she gave us the dimensions and some photographs of the room and we originally um, made really small work that we sometimes collage together to make these big wall assemblages. Um, but this was the first time that we were given this much space to fill. so. We just sketched out a couple of ideas and knew that we wanted to make something 3D and floating and ethereal. It's, it's really neat. It's just this little city that's floating in the room. Yeah, we wanted to create a piece that had, you know, a lot of open air qualities to it, but at the same time create smaller environments. Um, this idea of creating a threshold was really important to us. And the, the figure eight as a shape is um, you know, something, it's a symbol that's often used in our work and I think something that everybody can kind of draw on. And so to kind of take that form and create it into like these environments and allow it to, um, you know, have a threshold um, was really special for us. The street art thing was um, kind of a goal and a uh, kind of this ambitious direction that we chose to kind of push ourselves in. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's kind of what allowed our art to expand into what it is nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I feel like if we were with a gallery mm -hmm. back then, um, it really does like limit um, who gets to your work mm -hmm. and um, how many people it's going to affect. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're in a gallery, you're just close it off to that community and the people who are going to go into that space. Correct. And the world gets pretty small at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys just wanted to have more open, more of an audience? Yeah, we went to where the symphony parks and, mm -hmm. um, you know, we like strategically placed ourselves in a place in the city. Mm -hmm. um, well, what it actually looked like is that we would make these paintings like you see in the front room and mm -hmm. they were like four inch by six inch. Mm -hmm and we just line them up like one after another in this really linear format mm -hmm. all along the sidewalk for like half a block. Mm -hmm. So I feel like with this piece, it's a little bit of a tribute to that mm -hmm. where we would go out and do that every weekend. Um, and with this piece, we worked on each individual building and wanted them to seamlessly line up along this whole track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really neat. It's just mm -hmm. a great endeavor, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the space in between paintings is something that, you know, there's a, not a lot of um, painters that think of, you know, that in the context of their viewing their work is the fact that, you know, people are going to be walking from one painting to another to another. And um, that's kind of what we were always doing on the sidewalk. We like the idea that these people would just be walking to work and for, you know, 200 feet, 300 feet, they could look down and they could, you know, almost animate um, these images right, through their self narratives. motion mm -hmm. going to work. And so that's what this is kind of about the fact that you can walk around the entire thing mm -hmm. and, um, and, and create that animation effect through your own motion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's definitely a tribute to like what we were doing on the sidewalk and that whole idea of, um, it kind of creates painting as like a fourth dimension, mm -hmm. you know, because you have all that space in between the paintings and so then you have to, you know, walk across that linear track in order to kind of create the piece yourself. 
Okay. So like what you're saying is street, and whenever you guys were out there and, and you lined it up and people were walking by, it kind of makes me feel the same way here because we can walk around it, we mm -hmm. can walk within it, same thing, it just has a really good flow. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I, I read uh, somewhere that um, those pieces, those small pieces that you guys created, uh, you would start and you hand it to him and he would, you know, follow from there and hand it back to you. So you would do this. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Or for this piece, for example, um, Sandra was folding and designing and cutting out a lot of these buildings because when I would do it, it just looked like hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like really like hands on with things. So by the time I'd be done, it was really wrinkled. Um, so I took on like you know, painting and applic applicating the, the paint. And um, Sandra did some of that too, but uh, for us to just come to that decision and conclusion and then just go from there and work mm -hmm. was never like a big deal. It wasn't like, um, you know, this huge breakdown moment where like, okay, fine, like you draw on it, like I'll fold them. It just happened. We never even talked about it. It was right. just like, yeah, this is stupid. Like I shouldn't be folding these if I can't. And you can, mm -hmm. I'll do this. and. I think that's what makes our collaboration so natural, is that a lot of the decisions aren't made in these formal discussions or meetings, but just through like ongoing conversations and from being around each other mm -hmm. and problem solving together. Mm -hmm. So we just fell naturally into these roles for specific projects. And like Crockett said, for this one, I took on a lot of the designing and the construction of the building, and he problem solved a lot of the application of the painting on the material onto the paper. Speaking of the painting, is it done inside or on the outside? Inside. It's all inside. It's on the inside. But you see it on the outside. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the inside the outside. Um, that subject or that title kind of embodies lots of different aspects. The shape itself, um, because if you ran your finger along the edge of the shape, it would take you inside and outside constantly. Um, and the buildings themselves have that same. Um, concepts. We usually work with color though and I think with this piece we wanted to have that aspect of color um, but we wanted the light to be um, what was really giving life to these pieces. Um, so our solution to giving the pieces color was to subtly like change the color of the LEDs inside the buildings so you'll see they'll like change like every 10 seconds slowly fade into a different color and yeah, we, we really like the effect. I think that white, this white on white application is something that we'll keep experimenting with. Yeah, we're able to program over 16 million colors with these lights. That's awesome. So you can add however much RGB you want. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, each color was thoughtfully picked. And that kind of is the same as like you know how a painter would choose their colors they want to have right. so it's not like we had to limit ourselves by using the led lights right. we've always created paintings that had some kind of um, architectural elements recently we've really become obsessed with this painting modern smile which is a indoor room with two windows and then some kind of object placed in the windows in two in one place so it's kind of like these eyes, um, but people don't, a lot of people don't see it. And then we usually put some kind of like chase lounge inside the painting as like the smile. Uh -huh. And so it looks really cartoony to us, but to a lot of people it looks like this kind of serious, dry, um, architectural interior painting. Um, so that kind of, we were able to work that idea several times into this piece and it's something that we keep recreating this modern smile painting and um, this idea of, uh, again, like you have the building with the windows, but then if you, something's inside, it's like it brings it to life and it could be like these eyes of the building. Mm -hmm. It's like putting more fun into art and still life. Yeah, definitely. And we paint a lot of animals. I mean, I like the idea of animals because it allow uh, putting an animal in a painting because you can have life in the painting, but if you put a person inside the painting, there's a lot of connotations with that. Mm -hmm. And um, we all see ourselves inside of it. Mm -hmm. And it really does change the meaning. And 
So you put an animal inside of it, it has that life, but it, we treat it differently. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that it's interesting. Um, like we're not painting animals maybe because Sandra really loves animals. I mean, I like animals too, but it's not like I paint animals because I'm in love with animals. I kind of want something to be in there that's alive, but I don't want it to be a person and, you know, plants we use a lot, but, you know, what else do you have to choose from that yeah, has life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. We want to thank Sandra and Crockett for speaking with us. More information on scuba can be found at drawingwhilediving.com. More information on their gallery can be found at calderasantafe.com. More information on And X Art Space can be found at brand10artspace.com. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polar